Okay, thank you. So uh, I apologize that I'm still in Beijing. I should arrive early March in the Institute. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, my recent work on uh, the Birch and Swinton Dyer conjecture for special uh, abelian varieties. Uh, so uh, the BSD conjecture uh, is about, for instance, elliptic curves over Q. Uh, and uh, so it relates two different aspects of the elliptic curve. So first of all, the left-hand side is uh, uh, the L function of attached to your elliptic curve at S equals one. So it's an analytic function, right? So it's analytic, um, right? Um, and uh, so this is the left-hand side and the right-hand side is uh, the arithmetic of, uh, of E um, over Q. So for us, it will mean basically thermal groups, uh, the thermal group of E. Okay, so I, I will try to explain to you uh, my result in the simplest case. Uh, and I hope it's explicit enough that everyone can basically understand the statement. So uh, it is a case of the following elliptic curve. So it's uh, the equation is y squared plus y equals x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus, uh, 10x minus 20, uh, which is just what we usually call x0, 11. Uh, and uh, so, you know, if k is any subfield of C, uh, you may consider the solutions with uh, uh, coordinates in k, right? And uh, um, so uh, you also have to adjoin some special point at infinity. Uh, and so it has a natural structure of an abelian group, uh, uh, right? So mostly today I will be interested in the case where k is a quadratic field. So it's q and you adjoin some square root of an integer d, uh, which can be positive or negative. Um, and so let's start with uh, k equals q. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, we have the following fact uh, that, uh, E of Q is just uh, the set of rational points is just Z mod 5Z. And more precisely, it's, uh, it's you know, generated by uh, the point of coordinates 5, 5. Um, so, uh, you know, the fact that there is a point with rational coordinates of order 5, uh, you know, it's not a coincidence. It's because, uh, it's because uh, there is what we call a Nessestein uh, congruence mod 5, Nessestein uh, congruence um, modulo five. Uh, so let me explain uh, what this means. Uh, so this elliptic curve E uh, is attached to some uh, modular form um, F uh, of weight two uh, and uh, level uh, gamma zero eleven. So I, I don't have time to define what is a modular form, but in particular, it's a function from the upper half plane to C, um, um, which is holomorphic plus, you know, it satisfies a lot of symmetries. Um, and um, so it turns out the space of, uh, so, you know, a modular form in particular has a Fourier expansion. Um, where the ANs are, com uh, are complex and Q is E two pi I Z. Okay. Uh, so it turns out uh, the space of modular forms of weight two and level gamma zero 11 as dimension two uh, is generated by uh, some modular form F and some other modular form G. Um, so F uh, is given as follows. So it's an infinite product. Um, Right. It's, it's a nice exercise in complex analysis to check it's a modular form. Um, so let's write it, uh, you know, let's write its Fourier expansion as follows. So it's sum for n bigger equal to one of a and q n. And there are no constant coefficients here. Um, and uh, so uh, the, the modular form G um, um, is what we call an Stein series. So it's given as follow some constant coefficient, which is five over 12 plus some 
uh, sum, where the BN is just basically the sum of divisors of N, uh, except you remove the ones which are divisible by 11. Um, and so uh, now I said before, uh, this elliptic curve uh, is associated to some modular form F. Uh, so it means the following. So it means so uh, that um, uh, for any prime L, which is not 11, um, the Fourier coefficient AL of F is just L plus one minus the number of point of E uh, modulo L, right? So you can reduce your elliptic curve uh, modulo some prime L. Uh, and if L is not 11, it's again an elliptic curve and you can count the number of points on it. Um, so that's a fundamental relation between uh, the modular form and the elliptic curve. Okay, so that's what I mean by modular form associated to E. And what do I mean by Eschstein congruence, right? I, I talk about the Eschstein congruence mod five. So I just mean that uh, the modular form F is congruent to the Eschstein series G mod five, which of course doesn't mean anything, but uh, you know, we cannot compare mod five to holomorphic functions, but it means that the Fourier coefficients are actually in Z and they are congruent mod five. Um, right? and so in particular for N equals zero, you get uh, zero is congruent to five over 12 of five, which is true. Uh, and for N equals L, a prime not 11, you get uh, AL equals L plus one mod five. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you combine this AL equals L plus one mod five with the formula here, what you get is that uh, uh, the number of point of E over FL mod L is just divisible by five. And now this is uh, explained by the fact that you have a global point, right, uh, of order five on E with rational co coefficients. And this point, you can reduce it model and you get again a point of order five, which explains why, uh, you know, the Sestein congruence, you know, explains basically why you have such a point of order five, uh, intuitively speaking. Um, okay. So um, now let me, uh, let me go to the BSD conjecture for E over Q. Um, so, um, so the BSD conjectures, uh, you know, is about the L function at S equals one. So the L function is defined as follows. It's just minus two pi I times the following integral. And, you know, this integral makes sense because F, uh, you know, has no constant coefficient. Um, so it's a complex number, which can you know, may vanish a priori. Uh, and there is another important number, which is the real period of E. It's just the integral of uh, uh, the following uh, one form over the real points of your elliptic curve. So it's a positive number. Okay, so now uh, I can explain what BSD tells you. Uh, so BSD is about this L function at S equals one, but more precisely, it's about uh, the quotient of the function, uh, the value divided by this period. And it's a general fact that this is a rational number. Uh, but actually in this case, it's just one over five. You can show easily it's one over five. Uh, okay. Um, so that's the left-hand side of BSD. The right-hand side, uh, I don't have time to explain in details, but it's what we call the five Selma group of E over Q. So I can just tell you it's a finite abelian group um, and it contains uh, the points with rational coordinates mod five, which in this case is just Z mod five Z. What? So what we know is that this five Selma group is a finite abelian group, uh, which is killed by, by five actually, and which contains a copy of Z mod five Z and VSD uh, I mean, a very weak form of BSD uh, tells you that uh, actually the thermal group here is just n mod 5z. It's not bigger than that. Uh, and, you know, it's because of this identity that the L value uh, divided by the period is one over five. Uh, and so, of course, you, nowadays we can prove that even on the computer, but, uh, uh, you know, it was proved this uh, implication, you know, this was proved unconditionally by Barry Mazur. Um, more than 40 years ago. Um, 
of course, in much more generality. Um, okay. Um, Good. So now I have, I have explained what is the BSD conjecture for E over Q. So let me turn uh, to the BSD conjecture for E, not over Q anymore, but over, over a quadratic field. Uh, and roughly speaking, it's basically the same as the BSD conjecture uh, for an elliptic curve over Q. Uh, so, but it's not anymore E. It's E is a quadratic twist uh, by D. So the quadratic twist is just a unique. Uh, elliptic curve over Q, uh, which is isomorphic to, to E over Q square D, but not over Q, but not isomorphic over Q. Right, so it's characterized like that. Uh, so, you know, uh, so, so what I want to explain is the, what I can tell you about uh, the BSD conjecture for this quadratic twist uh, over, over Q. Um, okay, so for simplicity, assume that, uh, the discriminant D is positive, okay? And assume uh, D is a square mod 11. Okay, it's not necessary, but just for simplicity. Um, so in this case, the left-hand side of BSD, what is that? It's the L value uh, at S equals one divided by some period. Um, it, it's a rational number. The only thing you know a priori is that it's a rational number. Uh, let's call it LD, okay? So here is a fact, which is not so hard to prove using modular symbols, that five divides the numerator of LD. So it's something which you can deduce from Mazur's uh, results on the Eisenstein ideal. Right, okay. Um, so here's the thing. So the conjecture, uh, which we could call a very weak version of BSD, tells you that 25 divides LD if and only if the five thermal group of E D over Q is non-zero. Okay, so that's what BSD predicts, and uh, actually this is uh, true. Um, so it's a joint work with Wang, uh, Twin Wong, and myself um, in progress. So this is true. Okay, and uh, the proof uses uh, as the most powerful technique uh, known to number theory. Uh, which is uh, compute and compare. So basically we just compute explicitly this LD mod 25, and we compute explicitly this thermal group, this five thermal group, and we compare the two. Um, and um, how much time do I have? I'm already, maybe just two minutes. Um, so basically we produce a formula for this number mod 25 is just five times the class number of the quadratic field times the discrete log of the fundamental unit of the quadratic field mod 25. So, right, so K here is a quadratic field. Uh, HK is a class number. Uh, and UK is a fundamental unit. And log is a discrete log uh, in a, some sense. Okay, so I just want to conclude by uh, maybe a few remarks. Um, um, so, um, first of all, we do not assume uh, that uh, the rank of vanishing of the L function at S equals one um, is, is uh, zero. So, you know, uh, so the assumption that D is a square mod 11 uh, is precisely equivalent to the fact that the sign you know, the order of vanishing uh, uh, order at S equals one is even, but it could very well be that this is at least two, for instance. Okay, so we don't rule out this case. Uh, so we get results even in large range. Uh, although Goldfeld, uh, uh, the Goldfeld conjecture, you know, predicts uh, basically that, you know, for most discriminant D, uh, this uh, almost, you know, it's very rarely this rank is positive. It's almost always zero, but it can sometimes be two or more. Okay, uh, so uh, almost uh, always uh, the rank, the analytic rank is zero. Okay, and so basically we get some a relation between the Goldfeld conjecture for this quadratic twist and some classical uh, algebraic number theory problem, namely class number and units um, mod five. Okay. Um, 
but of course it doesn't mean we can prove anything unconditional but um okay um i also want to say that this uh, h log u appears in the recent work of Van Ketersch and his collaborator uh, on you know the triple value f f g g star at s equals one for g a weight one modular form um, um, associated to this quadratic field. So, you know, I would like to explore uh, more of this relation. Can we say something about the Harris Van Ketesh conjecture? Um, okay, and do I have anything else to say? Yeah, uh, last thing, uh, you know, uh, in general, our result is about uh, the P S H time quotient, uh, the P S H time quotient of uh, J0N, where P and N are primes and uh, P divides N minus one. So that's what we, we prove BSD for this. Uh, I mean, the weak form of BSD for that. And of course, it's almost never an elliptic curve except for P equals 11, uh, for P equals five, N equals 11. Otherwise it's an abelian variety of higher rank, uh, except if you, are, if you allow yourself to use P equals two, you, you may get, you know, an infinite family of elliptic curves, namely the one for n of the form x squared plus 64. So, you know, I don't know if we can get anything interesting uh, here. Okay, uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? I have a question. Uh, is this, is your technique related to the chronic limit formula at all? I mean, um, Maybe it may be, but uh, right now um, uh, the techniques uses modular symbols basically, uh, and uses the recent work of uh, Sharifi and Venkatesh on some conjectures relating modular symbols. Um, so we use their techniques a lot uh, to, to prove uh, this congruence for the L value mod twenty five um, in the real quadratic case. For the imaginary case, it's more elementary. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I, uh, I just said the chronic limit formula brings in the unit. Yeah, right. You're right. Yeah. Um, okay. Thanks. That discrete log is to what base? Uh, so it's um, so you reduce uh, the fundamental unit mod eleven, uh, and and then you project to the mod five z. Um, so eleven splits uh, in. Uh, in the quadratic field, yeah. So you reduce this modulo one of the primes, it doesn't matter which one. Okay, if there are no other questions, let's thank Emmanuel again.